Hello everyone, today we are in chapter one, lesson two, properties of numbers. And our objective for the day is to learn how to identify properties of numbers. And then use them to simplify numerical expressions. So some of the properties that we're going to be discussing in lesson two um, is the commutative property, the associative property, the identity property, and lastly, the distributive property. All right, let's start with the first one. The first one is the uh, commutative property. And so what that basically is, it's, it's kind of like a rule. And what that rule states is that you can add numbers in any order and also, not just addition, but you can multiply um, numbers in any order and you get the same result. So when we look at this problem right here, 3 plus 8, well, what is 3 plus 8? 3 plus 8, what they're saying is that 3 plus 8 is the same thing as 8 plus 3. Now let's take, about, take a look um, at that for a second. If we have 3 plus 8 equals 8 plus 3. Well, what is 3 plus 8? Well, 3 plus 8 is 11. And what they're saying is that is supposed to be what e is the same as 8 plus 3. Well, what is 8 plus 3? It is also 11. So that is true. That works. Let's try something else. Um, how about a 1 plus 5? Is 1 plus 5 the same thing as 5 plus 1? Well, what's 1 plus 5? 1 plus 5 is 6. And what about 5 plus 1? 5 plus 1 is 6 as well. So that is also true. And that's really what the commutative property is. With addition, it doesn't matter the order. You get the same number every time. Now, you are going to be moving into some algebraic concepts. And so what this is over here, this is the same concept, but instead of numbers, they're using letters. So what they're stating is A plus B is the same thing as B plus B, A. So whenever you're using addition, you can just switch the order. And B and A, they represent numbers. But like this, we could only talk about 3 and 8 and the 1 plus 6. But there's a ton of other examples that we could use. Whenever you use algebra, this A and this B, they can represent any number. So this is like a way to write it one time, and it covers all the numbers. Okay, so let's, um, this is the commutative property of addition. Let's move on to the commutative property of multiplication. This states that multiplication works as well. Let's go ahead and take a look. So um, right here we have 5 times 7, and they're saying that is the same thing as 7 times 5. Well, let's look at it. What's 5 times 7? 5 times 7 is 35, and that equals 7 times 5. What's 7 times 5? Well, 7 times 5 is also 35, and that's true. So with multiplication as well, it doesn't matter the order. You can switch them, and you get the same result. And here's the algebraic ex uh, equation here. A times B, and A and B represent numbers, is the same thing as B times A. And when A and B are right next to each other like that, that means A times B. Or you might be used to that, right, is the same thing as B times A. But with, when we use algebra, we, oh shoot, I meant to make a dot there. We go away from this um, x because that can be represented as a variable. They can be like a x b, what does that mean? But you're thinking it's a times b. Well, in algebra that doesn't work. So we don't represent multiplication using an x or a time symbol. What we do in, um, we do it this way. We either use a dot and that represents the multiplication or we just write the letters right next to each other, um, a b. A, B right next to each other means A times B, which is the same thing as B times A. Okay, that is called the commutative property of multiplication. Okay, let's go on to the next one. The associative property. So what the associative property states is that when you add or multiply, so we have addition and a multiplication again, you can group the numbers together in any combination. So if you look here, we have 4 plus 5 plus 1 and 4 plus 5 plus 1. So we have all the same numbers. The only thing that's different is the where they're putting the um, grouping symbols or the parentheses. So here, with the order of operations, it would say we have to add 4 plus 5 first, and then we add 1 to it. Over here, it's saying we have to add 5 plus 1 first and then add 4 to it. So they're saying that both of these things are equal. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. 
Okay, so order of operations says I have to do the parentheses first. 4 plus 5 is 9 plus 1 equals 4 plus 5 plus 1. We have to do the order of operations, which is 6. 9 plus 1 is 10, and that's equal to 4 plus 6, which is also 10. So that's true. So it works. So that is the associative property for addition. Now, when we write it as an algebraic, instead of using distinct numbers like 4, 5, and 1, or 7, or 8, or any number, we're just going to use variables. So here, they have A, B, and C, and A, B, and C, except right now they're grouping A and B together, and then and then adding C, and then over here they're grouping B and C together, and then adding A, and they're equal to each other. So this is called the associative property for, of addition. Now let's look at the associative property for multiplication. So we have 9 times 2 times 6 equals 9 times the quantity 2 times 6. So the order of operations states that we do the 9 times 2 first within this side of um, the um, equation. So equation, it divides a, a problem into two sides. This is the left side and this is the right side. So we're gonna work on the left side first. So nine times two would be 18 times six. 18 times six, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so I'm gonna do it over here on the side. Eight times six is 48, write the eight, carry the four. Six times one is six, plus four is um, four. No, it's 10. 6 plus 1 plus 4 is 10. So the answer is 108 equals 9 times the quantity 2 times 6. So 2 times 6 is 12. And then, oh, my bad, 9 times, um, there we go, 12. And then we have to multiply it by 9. 9 times 2 is 18, carry the 1. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So that is also 108. So that is true. So yeah, that's the associative property of multiplication. And using variables, or letters, this is how they do it. Letters are called variables. Um, they group A and B together here in parentheses, and then multiply it by C. And then here they have um, B and C, and then they multiply it by A, and you get the same thing. So very, very cool. Okay, on to the next property. This is the identity property. Now... The identity property states the sum of zero, sum, okay, when we use sum, do you know what we're talking about? We are talking about addition, okay? You're adding two things together, sum is the answer. So the sum of zero and any number is the number. Okay, so here, we have addition, the sum of any number, so they're just choosing four. So if you use the sum, we're adding two things together, so the sum of any number, zero, um, is that number again. So the sum of zero and any number is the number. So when we add four to zero, we get four. And it's kind of like identity. Identity is yourself. Like you have, you start with the number four, you add it to zero and you get the same thing. That's why it's called the identity property. Okay, so you just get the same thing. Same thing. So that's what you do with addition. You add um, any number to zero and you get the same thing. Now, when we talked about the product, the product of one and any number is the number. Now it's identity. We're trying to get the same number. We put a number in and we multiply it by one and we get the same number. That's the identity. The product means that we're dealing with multiplication here. Okay, so the multiplication of one in any number is the number. So we go eight times one, and we get eight again, and that is the same number, and it's the identity. It's like you're getting itself back. Um, yeah, so the algebra, how you would write that is they're just using the letter A. A plus zero equals A. That's the identity property of addition. And then A times one equals A. That's the identity property of um multiplication. All right, on to some problems. The first one is example one. So in this example, what we're doing is we're identifying properties of addition and multiplication. So we just need to tell which property is represented. So when we look here, two times six, the quantity two times six times one equals two times the quantity six times one. Can anybody remember what this one is for A? To me... Let's go through it. Does it look like the commutative property? Are we just, okay, so we're dealing with multiplication here, right? So I'm going to look at here. Are we just swapping the order? Um, no, there's some parentheses involved. 
is it the associative property? To me, this looks exactly like the associative property because there's parentheses, um, and then you multiply it by a number, and then the parentheses are on the other side, and then you multiply it by that number. So this is actually the associative property of what operation? Well, it's multiplication. Associative property of multiplication. All right. Awesome. On to B. We have 3 plus 0 equals 3. So we are starting with 3 and we end with 3 here. So I don't think this looks like the commutative property. We're not just swapping. What are we doing? Addition? Addition. We're not swapping the order. There's no parentheses involved, so it's not the associative property. So what I'm going to say is it looks like the identity property. We start with a number, we add 0 to it, and we get that same number. And that's exactly what's going on here. 3 plus 0. We start with 3, we add 0 to it, and we end up with 3. So this is the identity property of addition. And on to the last problem. We have 7 plus 9 equals 9 plus 7. Now, this is looking very familiar. Does anybody know what it is? Yes, it looks like the commutative property. The commutative property of addition states 3 plus 8 is the same thing as 8 plus 3. You just switch the order, and they're the same. And that's exactly what this is. So this is the commutative property of addition. Okay. Now it is time for you guys to practice this process on your own. So we're going to do the check it out. And so I have my little friend, the pause dragon, and he's going to come out and he's going to remind you that you need to pause your computer, laptop, or phone, or whatever device you're watching this. Do these three problems and then come back and check your answers and watch press play on the video and see how you did. Okay. All right, we are back. Um, check it out, example one. So let's tell which property is represented. Well, we have 7 times 1 equals 7. Uh, we're starting with a number, and we're ending with that same number. To me, that looks like the identity property right here. 8 times 1 equals 8. We get the same thing. We multiply by 1. So this is the identity property of multiplication. All right, let's go on to B. We have 3 plus 4 equals 4 plus 3. Now we're just switching the order. It's addition, and this really looks like the commutative property. 3 plus 8 is the same thing as 8 plus 3, or A plus B is the same thing as B plus A, and that's exactly what's going on here. So this is the commu commutative property property of addition. Lastly, C. What does C? Well, first off, I noticed a bunch of parentheses. So that's going to let me know that I'm pretty sure that we're dealing with the associative property here. And it looks like we are. The associative property of, what is this, addition or multiplication? And it is multiplication multiplication. All right, if you got all those right, great job, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.